What's up everybody? Uh, today with my Pit Boss Series 4 Pro Series Vertical Bullet Smoke. That is a, I gotta come up with some sort of a uh, abbreviation or something. I don't know. Put me in a good abbreviation. Use it. The Pit Boss Vertical Series 4 Pro Series. It's all those things. But what we're talking about today is something that everybody needs to know about and that's how to clean this thing because if you love to cook with it and you want to continue to be able to cook with it and cook well it needs to be cleaned on a regular basis now this is not after every cook you don't have to worry about anything like that but what you do want to do is you want to clean it well these got a storm rolling up folks i thought about just putting my smoker out there in the rain that probably wouldn't work too good anyway what we're going to do is we're going to do it right so uh what you what I was saying was is that you need to make sure that you are cleaning your smoker every three to four cooks, about five cooks max, uh, just to make sure that you don't have a lot of fat and grease settle down into the bottom of the smoker onto your drip pan and into your water pan and end up catching on fire. And then so let's get into some basics here. What you want is a bucket or something full of nice warm, warm to hot water, and you want just some regular old dish soap, nothing too complex, just regular soap, and you need you a good old fashioned rag. Now, this is a special rag because it's mine. But other than that, there's nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing real crazy about it. So you got your rag, and just think about it like you're washing a car. You're just using a little soapy water to get all the grime off so that you can keep it looking new. I go ahead and wipe down the outside a lot of times as well, just because you have pollen and dust and debris and smoke buildup and all this stuff sort of form on the outside. And it's just good practice to, from time to time, keep the whole thing clean. Now, so what I have done here today is I've gathered up my warm water, soap in it. I got me a, a rag that I'm not attached to. And you don't want to because this stuff's going to ruin whatever rag you use. You know, it's basically just gristle and, and um, tar from the smoke. So, uh, so what I've done is I have heated my smoker up to 225 degrees for about 30 minutes. And what this does is it causes everything inside that smoker to soften up, to loosen up, to cause all that fat and everything that's kind of cooked onto those grates to loosen up just a little bit. And so what I'm going to do first before I have any grease on my rag, is I'm just gonna get some of this smoke residue and all of this dust and whatnot off of the top. It doesn't take very long. You can see just a few, just a few swipes off the top, and that's where the smoke is coming out. And that'll just build up over time. And before you know it, you're gonna lean over, prop up on your smoker one day, and you're gonna ruin your favorite shirt. Oh. Your favorite shirt. Not my favorite shirt. No. It wasn't really my favorite shirt. It was my wife's favorite shirt. She bought it for me. And now I'm in big trouble. She's going to think I ruined it on purpose. Anyway. Enough of that. Like I said, just kind of hit it up just to get the majority of the lion's share of all that good old dust and grime off of your smoker. When a lot of people come over to your place to cook some of this good stuff that you've learned how to cook, and they're going to look over and they're going to see that smoker, and it's going to look like something out of a horror movie, something off a wrong turn or something, and they're going to think, oh, I don't know if I want to eat anything off of that. So just make sure every once in a while, you just give it a little three to four minute cleaning on the outside just so that you don't have a lot of buildup. And all I've done, same thing I did on the front, just a little wipe down. Just a little bit of wipe down, and this is the least important part. Maybe you're not quite as cosmetic as I am, I don't know. Uh, not everybody is. We're all very unique individuals with our own sorts of preferences and stuff, so I'm the type that I'm gonna clean mine. Like I said, that's not really important. Really don't have a whole lot to do with food. What's important is on the inside. Goes for everybody. <laughs> uh, anyway, so this thing's nice and hot. And so I've just got me a little, 
a little set of latex gloves here that are a little padded just to provide a little bit of protection. Thunder rolls, baby. Thunder rolls. Also, you want to you have unhooked, no electricity running to it when you're cleaning it. If this is your first time with somebody telling you that electricity and water doesn't mix, leave me a comment. Say thank you. In the comment section below. See, look at that. Just coming off real easy. And you can see since I warmed it up, this stuff is just coming right off. No big deal. And if you have some stuff that's giving you a problem, you can get, just get you a regular old scrub brush and that'll take care of most of the rest of it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, as, as soon as you put something else in this thing, it's gonna get, start getting built up on it again. So what you're trying to do is just eliminate it from getting so built up that you can't get it to come clean very easily. And so every fourth or fifth cook, just do what I'm doing and you won't have any trouble, I promise. And when I first got this thing, I did not follow the rule of heating it up. And I can tell you one thing, it makes a huge difference. If you've struggled with getting your grates clean because you didn't go through the trouble of heating it up, well, you did like me and you worked yourself a little harder than you had to. Good old lightning storm. I will say this, I'm doing this video for presentation purposes right here at my smoker, but somewhere uh, away from your normal standing around area, <laughs> like where I'm at right now, probably be a better option. I'm gonna set this one like this so that I can pull my drip pan out now. now I am gonna clean out this drip pan uh, with the water hose downstairs, so you can see that, oh, oh, I don't want to clean mine out. I don't think I need to. Well, that's why you need to, right there. You see all that? That's not good. That's the kind of stuff that'll catch on fire and give you a bad day. And we don't want to have a bad day, now do we? This is your water pan. And you can see that even though a lot of the fat and stuff is not supposed to make its way down into that, it does. So make sure that you clean all this stuff out and that you get it nice and clean for your next cook. Oh, wait, it's been cooled off just a little bit. All right, so one option that you've got, you might've tried before is to take your rag and to try to scrub this stuff off of here like this. And you can see it's coming clean pretty good. But when you get around here around the edges, it's a bit more difficult. And so what I like to do, look at that junk. What I like to do is just give it the old heave ho. I don't know if you put yours together, if they put it together at Lowe's for you, but that just sits in there. You can just take this off and give it a, quick spray down with the water hose and let it sort of soak. And your water hose is gonna get some of this stuff off, but you're definitely gonna to have to have a degreaser and something abrasive. And I'm not just talking about your language. some fast orange you're gonna notice like I said earlier that a lot of this stuff around the outskirts of this thing are gonna be a lot harder to get to come clean something that's a good uh, degreaser 
uh, without being too much of a chemical is a good option. I, I recommend Fast Orange. I'll leave a link to this stuff below. It works good to have in the shop and to just use to clean your hands and stuff. Just gets just about anything off. All right, go on. You just take some of this stuff and just give it a quick, you can see it's just coming completely clean with the Fast Orange on there. This Fast Orange is gritty, and so it, it's abrasive itself. I didn't use it my first couple times cleaning, and I just thought, well, I guess that stuff's just gonna be on there forever. But you put a little Fast Orange on there, and you're gonna get to see that stuff come off, and you realize you're gonna be able to see those ribs cooking next time, which is awesome. This is one of the main benefits of this type of cooker is just being able Look at the food. And just like that, maybe two minutes worth of work. Good rinse. Remember, we just cleaned the outside with soapy water and we used fast orange on the inside. And I'm not gonna say it's as good as new, but it's, uh, it's close enough. And we're just gonna put a little bit of fast orange on your drip pan. You don't have to worry too much about this thing, but I am gonna put just about a minute's worth of work into it just to get it to that next level. So it's just that much longer before I have to do this again. And that is about all of the effort that I am gonna put into that. Just a good rinse. Look at that, baby. Nice and clean, clear. That'll last for about three cooks before you won't really be able to see what you're cooking anymore. There we go. Now, something you want to remember is that this, <laughs> if you put yours together, you probably figured this out the hard way or you've just been having a rough time. This is not a handle. It looks exactly like a handle. It's not a handle. This is a spacer that prevents this thing from going flush up against the back. So just keep that in mind whenever you're working with your smoker, that uh, that keeps it from going all the way back. All right, so we are officially uh, back in there. Now, we're just gonna easy peasy, lemon squeezy, put the door back on. You just line them up, get them on there. If you're still got soapy gloves on, it might be a little bit more difficult. <laughs> but there you go. And so we've got a nice clean window now that we're going to be able to see our stuff cooking. We're going to put this last rack back in. And now that the majority of everything is clean, I'm going to just sort of hit this inside right here a little bit. A lot of times there will be a buildup of just some light ash from the burn pot in there. I don't worry too much about my inside cabin. I have done it once and I'll probably do it again in a few cooks. Last but not least, we are going to clean out the burn pot and the fish tray. You're gonna see a nice little buildup of ash in there. You definitely wanna to try to clean this thing out every cook, every other cook, and it's pretty easy to do. You just give it a dump, a couple taps, and that's really all you have to do on that end. Comes clean really nicely. Give it a little tap, screw it back in, and you're good to go there. Now, you need to make sure that you're cleaning out your grease tray. It's very important. Maybe you've been cooking and you realize, what grease tray? I don't have a grease tray. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's right there. And you can see, I got a nice collection of grease from my brisket I cooked the other day. Now, you can pour this stuff down the drain, or you can just toss it out on the grass and let your old fat dog lick it up. He'll be out there for two hours licking grass. Usually just gonna stick it right back in there. I might actually give it a dip in the hot water just to get it nice and clean. Now I'm gonna make another video on how to clean out your pellet reservoir. It's not too bad. Another thing that you wanna get clean is you wanna get your probe clean. Now, a lot of times I do this in, the, in my uh, sink 
but if you are already got all your stuff out there cleaning, you might as well just go ahead and clean that probe up a little bit. Just general maintenance is just gonna improve the life of it. Don't pull real hard on your lead, but just get it nice and clean. There we go. And usually what I'll do is I'll just hang that over. Let it hang out right there in that little groove. So all my racks are clean. My drip tray's clean. My water pan's clean. My ashtray is clean, or my burn pot, whichever one you want to call it. My grease tray is clean. And my front glass is clean, which is my favorite part to have clean, like I said before, so you can watch the food cook. Great benefit of this cooker is that you don't have to open it up every time you want to look at your food as long as you clean it on a regular basis. So keep that in mind. Thanks again, guys. Oh, I'm constantly putting out uh, material and content about how to take care of these smokers, how to use these smokers, how to get the most out of your Pit Boss Series 4 Vertical Pro Series Smoker. Got to come up with an acronym. Someone please give me an acronym. Keep that in mind. Thanks again, guys. Please hit the like button for me. Smash that subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell if you want to know the next time that I put out a video. Thank y'all so much, and we'll see you in the next video. For about 30 minutes. And the reason that you do this is because you want to loosen up. Well, these birds are losing it. And that's actually in the water tray groove, so there we go. And then this goes right back in there where you found it. That's not how I found it. <laughs> All right.